OBS Studio version 28 came with many awesome features and tweaks, most of which pale in comparison to the full 10-bit video pipeline overhaul, which also allows for HDR support. NVIDIA Shadowplay added HDR recording last year, and now you get all the benefits of multi-track audio recording, scene compositing, and everything else OBS offers in an HDR feed too. This is part two of my three-part series on using OBS to make HDR content, or just play games in HDR and then record a stream in SDR, where here we're just focusing on recording. The last episode was streaming. We'll cover everything you need to get set up, so let's go. This video is sponsored by CuriosityStream. Help me keep this documentation coming and get access to my own streaming site, Nebula, bundled with CuriosityStream at the link below. First and foremost, HDR stands for High Dynamic Range and is the new video format that much of the video technology today is moving towards. With HDR video, the higher dynamic range, as the name suggests, allows for much brighter whites in the video, allowing for an exponentially higher contrast between the white and the black parts of the screen, allowing for much more dynamic and true-to-life images. There's a bunch of different standards for it, it's a complete train wreck on PC, and at least IMO, it's not even worth using other than on phones or if you have an OLED-based display. But that's where things are heading towards, and we just kinda gotta keep up. For this video, you will need an HDR display that you plan to use or game on, or theoretically just an HDR video source from a camera that you're inputting, uh, the ability to encode HEVC or H.265 video via a AMD or NVIDIA GPU, if you actually want to record HDR footage, that is. If you just want to game in HDR and record in SDR, then really nothing has to change about your encoding setup, and we'll cover that too. By the way, this is all using the new OBS Studio version 28 beta. The full release build uh, should theoretically be released by the end of August 2022 here, and I generally recommend waiting due to the plugin incompatibility issues, among other things that I covered in my previous video talking about the whole beta, but pretty much all of these functionality settings and things like that will remain the same, so we're going on and covering them. If you just want to play your games in HDR and continue recording content in SDR, we'll cover that first. First, if you're playing console games or games on a dual PC streaming setup via a capture card, you don't actually have to do anything different. You're, you're, you're kind of already done. All of the existing capture cards that you would be using right now that allow for HDR to pass through to your monitor will also automatically tone map that HDR footage down to SDR video in OBS by default, so just do what you normally do and you're good to go. Thanks for, for watching. But if you're unhappy with your capture card's HDR to SDR tone mapping or you just want to experiment, you can let OBS tone map it to SDR for you. Go into your video capture device properties for the capture card and change the video format to P010 and the color space to Rec 2100 PQ if available. Of course, also setting your console or PC on the other end to HDR mode as well or you're not going to have HDR. <laughs> I have a list linked below of capture cards that the OBS team have already validated to work in HDR mode with the updates so far, but here's where it stands. AverMedia's Live Gamer 4K and theoretically the Live Gamer Bolt, the 4K60 Pro Mark II, HD60X and S Plus, and the 4K60S Plus from Elgato, plus the EVGA XR1 Pro and Asus Tough CU4K30. Those will all work for sure, other than the Bolt is kind of a maybe. Most Magewell, AJA, and Blackmagic design cards that support 10-bit and HDR video should also work, but they haven't been tested yet. As I get time, I will try to validate through more cards and contribute them upstream to the devs, but I don't have time for it at this exact moment. This will add your capture card's HDR feed to your normal SDR canvas in OBS and tone map it back down to SDR to fit with everything else. This won't affect what you see on your monitor when you're playing, just what your viewers see. If you're on a single PC, capturing PC games that are running on the same computer as OBS, first make sure your display is set to HDR and that your game is running in HDR or using Auto HDR in Windows 11. Then go into your Game Capture Source Properties and change the color space setting from RGB to Rec 2100 PQ, which will hook your game in full HDR. And again, it will be added to your normal SDR canvas and tone mapped to SDR for you. Easy peasy. It's very important to note that many filters and effects will not work if a source is operating in HDR, so this will impact some existing setups. Now, what if you want to record in full HDR? We'll need to change a few more settings, including your encoder, but don't worry, I got you covered. I want to note that running OBS in HDR mode increases the compositing and rendering loads that OBS puts on your GPU, so this will impact performance more than normal 8-bit SDR will. So. Just keep that in mind. First and foremost, let's set up OBS to actually operate in HDR. Go to Settings, Advanced, and then change Color Format under the Video subsection to P010. Then go to the Color Space setting and change it to Rec 2100 PQ. Leave Color Range on Limited. Leave everything else alone unless you know what you're doing. 
HLG and PQ are different gamma curves for HDR video. Effectively, they're just complicated maths used to determine the brightness and saturation levels of the pixels in your video. It's out of the scope of this video to dive too deep into that, but these days PQ is kind of what every, you know, what everyone prefers as the way to go and what most applications support, so sticking with it should get the best results the most quickly. I also want to note that while I say you need an HDR monitor to game on in order to capture HDR footage, of course, that's never going to change. You don't need a fancy one. If you have one that supports an HDR mode, even though it doesn't look very great, that won't change what your viewers see, so you can still play in the crappy, mostly SDR HDR experience on one of those HDR 400 or 350 HDR monitors, and your viewers will still get the full experience, so that's kind of cool here. Now, we need to add HDR sources to your canvas or modify existing sources to support HDR. If you add a video capture device for a capture card, under Video Format, choose P010, and for color space, choose Rec 2100 PQ. I have a list linked below of capture cards that the OBS team have already validated to work in HDR mode with the new update so far, uh, but here's where it stands at the time of recording. Every media is a Live Gamer 4K, the 4K60 Pro Mark II, the HD60X and S Plus, and the 4K60 S Plus from Elgato, plus the EVGA XR1 Pro and the ASUS Tough CU 4K30. All of those should work out of the box just fine. Most Magewell, AJA, and Blackmagic design cards that support 10-bit and HDR in general should also work, but they haven't been validated yet. As I get time, I will try to test and validate more cards and contribute them upstream to the devs so that they know, but I don't have time for this at the moment. Obviously, make sure you have a HDR signal running through the capture device from a game console, PC, or camera setup, of course, or you won't be getting an HDR feed. Click OK. Game capture sources for games running on the PC that you're running OBS on now have a new option at the bottom for color space. RGB should be left on for SDR modes, but if you're gaming in HDR, set that to Rec 2100 PQ and click OK. You no longer need my LUT pack to tone map HDR to SDR that's already handled as I mentioned and now we can capture in native HDR. It's very important to note that many filters and effects will not work if a source is operating in HDR, so this will impact some existing setups. I covered this in the previous video, this will break a lot of existing setups. The NVIDIA broadcast background removal integration is one such example that just will not work if HDR sources are running, but the normal NVIDIA broadcast app and the device it adds to OBS would not be affected here. Audio filters are also not affected by HDR modes. It's also worth noting that any non-HDR sources added to your canvas will now appear a little dim, since they, well, are compared to HDR sources. This is normal and just the consequences of mixing SDR and HDR sources on the same video. You can use a color correction filter on your SDR specific sources to try to tweak brightness or contrast to, uh, you know, make it fit a little bit better if desired, but it won't ever really look perfect. You also have the ability, if it's looking too dark or gray, to go into the advanced settings in OBS and change the SDR white level setting here and increase it to brighten things up a little bit or change it in your Windows HDR settings and see if that makes your footage that is, you know, SDR look a little bit more true to life with the mixed sources. Your mileage may vary. Now we have to set up your encoder settings. H.264 encoders cannot be used for HDR, so no X.264 or normal GPU encoding. This version 28 update, though, lets you use AMD and NVIDIA HEVC or H.265 encoders instead, which will encode HDR video. HEVC encoders added by a plugin like StreamFX will probably work as well, but I'd kind of recommend transitioning back to the new native integrations for these if you can. It's going to be better in the long run. QuickSync HEVC support will come in the future. It's not here at the moment, but the CPU AV1 encoders from SVT and AOM can be used for HDR as well. Go to Output Settings. Change your encoder to NVENC HEVC for NVIDIA or AMD HW hardware HEVC for AMD users. Set up your normal stream settings, but change profile from main to main 10, as we do need 10-bit for HDR. Click apply and OK. Start recording and congrats, you're making content in high dynamic range. This can be uploaded directly to YouTube and will eventually end up in HDR. YouTube processing for high-end video formats is very slow if you haven't uploaded much of it before and if you don't have a high traffic channel. Even on my main channel here, where 4K 60fps videos process in a matter of minutes most of the time, HDR videos can take anywhere from a few hours to a few days to actually show up in HDR. My side channel, Lost Saves, which is much smaller, might not get HDR versions of videos for weeks. This doesn't affect the normal SDR viewable copy of your video. This will still mostly be available at the normal amount of time for your channel, maybe a little bit slower, but it just, you know, it affects the HDR version. So just be patient with the HDR transcode. If your OBS advanced settings match what I have shown here in this video, the P010 and the PQ Rec 2100, it'll be in HDR. 
You can even check the metadata of your file using the free program Media Info, and it'll show if it's in the right color spaces and if it's HDR10 and so on. If your file is good, it'll show up as HDR eventually. Don't ping YouTube on Twitter. Don't ping the OBS devs. No one can speed up processing for you. Sorry. Covering this OBS update in Intel's AV1 encoder has brought out a lot more support than I could have imagined the past couple weeks, and I just want to say thank you. Seriously. I've received a ton of requests, though, to cover more ways, more ways to use the AV1 encoder, all the different things in the OBS update, including testing HDR and OBS, and everything you can imagine at this point, and I'm getting there as quick as quick as I can, but really, I'm only able to just drop everything else and focus so significantly on these new developments thanks to your all's support over on Nebula. Nebula is my own creator-owned video streaming site where my videos are ad-free, they're higher quality, often noted in by you all in the microphone reviews, which is pretty cool, and I include lots of extra stuff, including extended quality comparisons and downloads to the raw files for samples and things like that. The best way to sign up for Nebula is through the bundle we've made with CuriosityStream, another video streaming site chock full of documentaries and um, just pretty stellar nonfiction work. I've been obsessed with all of the images and photos coming out from the James Webb Telescope, and CuriosityStream has a show on that right now called First Images that you could go check out. Our bundle is honestly pretty crazily priced compared to other services that I've seen in that you get access to CuriosityStream's entire library with Nebula thrown in for free for just under $15 per year. That is a lot of content for your dollar and a higher value than just about every other streaming service, which is pretty wild. Sign up for the best deal in streaming and continue to help me provide lots of documentation and the stuff we do over here as well at curiositystream.com slash ebos. Enjoy your HDR experience and make some cool stuff. Thankfully, HDR recording isn't too complicated, but editing HDR videos just Oh, it gets messy. Let's cover that in the next part of the series. It's it's a lot. I'm your stream professor. Remember, be kind. Rewind.